here. But the game designer, creator, writer, <laughs> one man show of the Masters <laughs> of the Masters to build Thank one you. of the best indie that I saw this year. And yeah. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for accepting the interview with us with GameSurf. And can you tell us who are you? In a few seconds about you, who are you? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, first off, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Um, my name is Pat Nayum. I'm a sole developer from Sydney, Australia. And I made The Master's Pupil. It's a hand-painted 2D puzzle game set inside Claude Monet's eyeball. Uh, it's entirely hand-painted with real paint and real paper. Um, it took about seven years to make. And um, yeah, it's a puzzle game set loosely on his life, but it's mostly... You know, it's about puzzles and kind of experiencing his artwork, basically. Okay. And how the idea of make a um, game, a hand-draw game, came in, up to your mind? This is something, you know, it's not so usual to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not usual. <laughs> um, it's, it was basically, well, it started with the idea of a game set inside an eyeball. Um, mm -hmm. because I saw these close-up photos of uh, a human iris, you know, these kind of like this circular landscape with this like valley of all these vines. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was would be an amazing landscape for a game, you know, an area to play in uh, and to set over someone's life. So the next, you know, idea was to have it start with their birth and end with their death or later in their life. Um, and then it was trying to work out who I would do it, you know, who, who would be this person, who it belonged, whose eye it was. Um, and so next it was um, about finding a person that would work. And I thought maybe I could write it, you know, have a fictional person. Uh, and then I remembered Claude Monet had, a, had cataracts. So that became this kind of big bad for the end of the game, this idea of, that you work through his life, and then at the end, there would be this kind of cataract castle that you climbed into. Um, and so that was the kind of next idea. And then it came the idea of hand painting it. Um, so I could match it with his style and kind of tie the world together and use his artwork along with my style of painting and it kind of try and, we're trying to get my painting as close as I could to his, which is very hard because he's a genius. Um, so it was, you know, this this process of getting it close to him as much as I could. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a process of getting it all the way to to him painted. It wasn't something that I thought of first, but it was more of a means to an end, in a way. Okay, and basically you answered it to my next uh, question: Why you choose Monet? Basically, I told you that you choose Monet because you were a fan of Monet, but. It, it was all the process of the creation that you were looking for someone. That's amazing. Yeah, that's but... right. Because, you know, he's such a he's such a beautiful painter. You know, I don't think anyone looks at a Monet and goes, yuck. You know, that's not very nice. You know, it's kind of just stunning, stunning work. And so the idea to essentially uh, use him, it, it just felt, he fell naturally into that place because of the eye, because of his style, because of his artwork. He just felt it just worked so well, you know. Okay, and when you started to draw the master's pupil seven years ago, I know that you didn't have any coding skills at the beginning. So <laughs> no. you know, it's something crazy that you started without any coding skills. <laughs> and you said, again, "You know what? Let's create a video game. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's challenge? just go." I mean, you started, okay, what was the biggest challenge when you started to code a video game? You know, and you said, yeah, I don't know how to code. And let's make it handmade. And let's say this, you know, you were like, <laughs> what was the biggest think, challenge? Uh, the biggest challenge was definitely learning how to code because it, I come from a visual background. I'm a graphic designer. And so painting makes sense. You know, there's, there's paint on the end of your paintbrush and you put it on a canvas one to one, there's nothing else. And so for me, it was about learning this like abstract language of how does a computer work? How does code work? How does game design work? All these things I had to learn. Um, and that I think was definitely the hardest because it was just so abstracted. You, you do this one thing over here and then over here something else happens. So there's not this kind of immediacy that, that, uh, that what I'm used to in art, you know? 
Um, but it was a process that I found was very, a lot of learning and a lot of like interesting problems to solve. And so I learned how to enjoy the work more than anything else, how the process of it was enjoyable and interesting to me uh, that I found uh, helped how hard it was to actually make. It was a way of enjoying the work, you know, the day to day work. And during these seven years, at the beginning, you know, I imagine you came from graphic designer. Okay, so you mm -hmm. had to learn something totally new. Okay, you had the idea, you had, you started to work on it, you started to think about how to improve it, then the idea of the cataract so I can connect it. When you understood that you were doing something beautiful and you say to yourself, it's happening. It's happening, I'm creating a video game. <laughs> You know, that, you know, maybe started as a, a project and you said, it's yeah. working. When yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the first time I saw a screen, just a single mm -hmm. screen that I could run a character along, um, the player character, with different, the different layers of artwork and they would move, I'll see if I can do it on the screen, they would move in this kind of parallax effect, so these layers moving mm -hmm. like this. And so... When I first saw that screen, I thought, oh, this is interesting. There's something here that it could work. You know, having the real paint, um, the texture of the paint on screen and being able to kind of see the detail and have that move around, I thought, okay, maybe I've got something. That was the first step. Um, but the first three years, because I was doing it part-time, I was doing it on my weekends and on my... Um, you know, on evenings and that kind of thing. And once I had made that first level, so I'd made that first little screen and then I made a full level um, thinking, okay, this is something. And I showed that to people. Uh, I showed, you know, I really liked it. My friends and family, they really liked it. And so I thought, well, maybe this is something that, uh, that I can do. This is something that I can work on. This is something that will be interesting to people and will look unique and interesting. Um, and that's when I thought, well, and that was three years, you know, <laughs> that was three years of hobby of working on my hobby. And so that was then, okay, let's, let's do this, you know, and that's so when I went part-time and started. On the, Sorry? Way, on the half way, you understood that something was happening, something really yes. just stood up for three years. And I love the thing that you were making your mom playing the video game. That was one of the best video on Instagram <laughs> that your mom was playing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yeah yeah but you know for example i imagine a lot of guys in this moment guys and girls of course are in this moment in your situation of seven years ago you know maybe they ha have a passion for the video games they would like to start but you know mm, not all of all of them have coding skills what is your advice for them if a person now wants to start to develop an idea a video game from someone yeah. who passed me, I who was there <laughs> I think I think the first step, and it's a very simple one, is go online and get the Unity tutorials. So I built it in the Unity um, game engine, and mm -hmm. that game engine is it's got some great assets online, a lot of video tutorials, a lot of you know this kind of thing. So easy to digest, easy to learn, easy to kind of work out if it's something that you like. Because, like I said before, there is a lot of work to be done in game design and development. So, for me, it was about learning to enjoy the work of it. Because there's so much of it. There's so much work. And there's so much <laughs> challenges and process to it. There's a lot of steps and a lot of, like, different elements that you have to learn how to deal with. Um, so, I think... It's very different from playing a game and you can never be the person that actually plays it. So if you're trying to make a game that is something that you want to play, you're not going to get there because it's, you're always, as the creator, you're always different from the player because you have this understanding of the way the game works. There's no way you can play it like someone else, but you're the only one that gets to make it. And so you have the joy of the work. And so if you can sit 
and enjoy the day-to-day -day work of it, then above all, you're going to enjoy yourself. And, you know, if I, there's no way to sit there for seven years and make a game without enjoying it. I would have gone, I will, I, I would have gone mad, at least more mad than I am now. So I think there's a matter of, you know, getting to enjoy the work and, and seeing where it goes. No, I agree on the Unity um, tutorials because when I started to learn about how to create, Unity was my first choice. And when I did something with the Lego um, presettles, I was like so happy that something was yeah. moving actually. <laughs> and but um, what is your yeah. plans for the future? I mean, you spent seven years. Okay, now you are having great critics, a lot of fun, lot of good reviews. What are your plans for the future? Let's be honest, because you know I don't want to wait seven years to see what are you doing. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I was Me too. Like, a minute ago. I don't want. It. I don't want it. Seven relax years a bit, too long. Okay. Relax, but then we'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's just too long to wait. Nobody needs that. Um, and I definitely don't. Even though I've I've joked a lot about different sequels I could do for the Master's Pupil. So, you know, like it's this one is set in Claude Monet's eye. I thought maybe Van Gogh's ear because Van Gogh mm -hmm. cut off his ear at some point. I could do Frida Kahlo's monobrow. Um, or Dali's curly mustache, you know, all these kind of ideas. But I think, I don't think I could paint a game again because it's just, it's a long process. And part of this process of making this game is like learning how to design a game, learning how games work, learning how the industry works as well. Um, they're all things that I found really interesting and I want to develop more into. And so I want to make a bigger, different game uh, you know, a third person open world kind of adventure game, because that's the games that I've started playing a lot more of in during the seven years that I've been playing, uh, that I've been working on this game. And so I want to involve, you know, get involved with something like that. And hopefully I can, with the, the earnings of this game, develop a prototype so I can then pitch it to and get publishing to make a little game studio of my own. You know, that would be the best dream, I think, for sure. Okay, that's cool to know, you know, because maybe someone was expecting a next India next, you know, uh, platform. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. The opposite. And so here you come my yeah. question for you, you know, because something it's something that I'm wondering, you know, I was playing the Master Poop and I was like, what is your favorite game? You know, what is the favorite? I mean, a person that creates this, you know, oh. what is playing usually every day? What is your favorite game that you like it? Well, I think my favorite game is very different from the games I'm playing every day because the, you know, my favorite game is Journey, I think. Um, okay. You know, that was 10 odd years ago now that came out. And what I loved about that game was just something that is, you get to pick up and play. There's no language, there's no text. Um, and that's something that I wanted to recreate for the Master's Pupil was something that it was uh, it was broad and international, so anyone overseas could play it in, in any different language. Uh, but then also, and it, children can play it or old people can play it. Something that is, uh, anyone can kind of experience the game. Um, but Journey is this kind of, it's fun to play. It is exciting. It's a mystery. There's all these things tied together that make it really interesting. Um, but games that I like to play now or, you know, that I play all the time is just anything and everything. You know, I like to play all different sorts of games because as a developer or as a game designer, there is something to be said about uh, experiencing different design and different, you know, experiences that games can offer because I like to play anything from like Fortnite to little tiny indie games because, and everything in between, because there's just so much on offer there that I can experience and, uh learn from more than anything else for sure okay and i can definitely say that there was something a journey in the master pupil because it was visible that there was something you know the not speaking no text you know it was amazing so yeah but yeah was last question from my side i really thanks thank you a lot for this it was amazing to play the master pupil i mean it was one of the best thing i ever seen this year you know
I was not expecting at all oh. to see something like this this year. When I discovered oh. you, <laughs> I saw it. I said, "Yeah, I have to play it." And yeah, thanks a oh, million. Thank you so much. Thanks again for being with us this afternoon on Gamesers, and I wish you thank all you the for best. Thank you having me. And cannot thank wait. You, thank you. Can't wait to play your next game. So, <laughs> and yeah, have a great weekend. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Bye.